Sometimes making something look good doesn't always mean making something that's practical. For example, take a look at this card right here. It looks awesome, or at least I think it looks pretty cool, but right away I know there are some concerns when you see something like this. So let's see if we can't do this thing right here, but with the following constraints. We want to animate it with CSS only. And we also need to think about mobile devices. What happens if we don't have a hover to trigger the animation? There's also dealing with keyboard navigation as well, and also a solution for people who have turned off animations in their system preferences. I think making the card itself isn't going to be too much of a challenge, but let's see if we can't make this card and take all of those considerations in while we're at it. Hi there, my name is Kevin, and here on my channel we learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials, and we're going to be learning a whole bunch as we try and solve all those problems with this card. Let's go and dive in. So here we are in VS Code. We can see the finished design is hiding behind my head right here, so there it is. And whenever we're starting with something like this, we are going to do this from scratch. As you can see here, we are in a blank HTML file. So let's start actually with the very basics. I'm going to put an exclamation point, hit tab, that is Emmet. If you don't know Emmet, there should be a card popping up right there for it right now. And you can learn a lot more about how to write your HTML a lot faster. Uh, I'll just call this fun animated card, fun animated card. Whenever we're doing something like this, where there's animations involved and all this other stuff, I think for me, the easiest thing is start with what I know how to do without any problems, which is usually the finished state. So don't worry about the animations and not worry about anything else. Let's just make sure we can actually get this and then we can work our way backwards a little bit to make sure that we can get all the animations in and everything else. But we need this and this is also, you know, we can see everything we need here. Uh, to be able to implement. So let's start writing some code to see if we can get this to work. All right, so the first thing we want is just a card because that's all we really have. So there's my card that's going to be there. Now, what do we have in my card? Well, we have an image. It's just a background image, though, so I'm not going to worry about that. Then we have a title. So I'm going to do an H2 with a card title. I'm not doing an H1 just because I'm assuming this would be um, something awesome, something that would be put into context with other things. And let's turn word wrap on for now. Um, so we have something awesome there for the title. Then I need my text that's going to be right underneath. So that would just be a paragraph. I'm going to call it card. Um, we could, you know, we could do card body just for the text there since we already have a class. Uh, we'll throw a lorem 20-ish. Maybe that's a bit long. Cut it right about there maybe. Um, and then, and again, this is more Emmet. So you can check that uh, vid video that I'd mentioned earlier if you don't know Emmet at all. And then here, the learn more I'm guessing would be a link. It could be a button. Uh, but we'll do it as a link that has the class of button on there and we'll call this uh, or it's going to go nowhere and let's just put learn more right there. And I think that's all we need for our HTML. Nice and simple and very clean. And if you're thinking about well, what about this guy right here that's going underneath? Whenever we have more decorative elements like this one, um, I think that and especially because we know in the animation it slides in and out and it moves around and it's just a decorative element. It's not a border because there's a little bit more going on. Uh, but there's no content involved in that. It's really decorational. That's for me what pseudo elements are for. So we're going to stick with a pseudo element on that. That's why we don't need any markup or anything like that. Um, so with that, we can get into our CSS. So I think the first thing we should do is I have a CSS file already. So I'm just going to come to here. I'm going to write link uh, CSS and just like that, magically, it's already linked and everything we need is there. Uh, this is Emmet and it's the default way it puts that out. It'll just do style.css. So if you have it somewhere else, uh, you might have to modify the href that comes in there, but you can see I just have my style right there. Now, I did mention I already have a few things set up here in my CSS file, but there's nothing too much or nothing that's too important. Um, the main things that are coming in here are I just set up my colors as custom properties. If you don't know about custom properties, they're the best and there is a card popping up right there for them right now. So you can check those out. Um, the typical box sizing border box, which uh, I put on every single project I do. And then this right here, and let's just refresh this. So we get my background coming in. And actually I put a hack. What am I doing? Background here should be my var. If you don't know about custom properties, you don't want to check out that video. I think you'll figure it out pretty fast. And I do get questions on how I do custom properties. Um, basically neutral is like my close to black. Neutral 900 means really dark, 100 be white. I only have three colors in here, I think. So I didn't really mess around with anything else, but like 400, my 500 be slightly darker, 600 be slightly darker. Um, I also realized here, I made a little bobo, I don't have any commas, there we go. So the three colors we will be using, and now we can dive in. So let's select my card itself first. 
Um, I think we can't really see any text or anything, so let's start with my color. I'm going to say that the color is my light, or here, I have my variable set up. Um, if you're writing with VS Code, you just do hyphen hyphen and you'll get the access to all of them. And then when you select it, it will do the whole custom property for you. So that makes life a little easier. For now, we can just say that the font family as well is just a serif. And we can come in and if we want to tweak that a little bit after. Um, okay, so we have that. We can actually see my card now. That's a good sign. Or see the content inside of it, I should say. Um, let's set my background image on here. Background image is going to go to URL. And so we'll come in on here and say, uh, it's IMG folder and I already have it in there, my card.bg. I always get questions on this. You'll notice I didn't put quotation marks around it. Um, you don't have to, if there's any spaces in the names you would. Uh, maybe it's better practice to always have it, but you don't need to have the quotations there. Uh, we'll throw a background size of cover on here and we get my background size and we want some padding on there too, right? Now for the padding, because I'm doing it as a background image, like you could go height and try and do things, but I think the easiest thing to do is, uh, I'm going to come in with like an eight rem on the top and then do zero on the sides and zero on the bottom. And I'll explain why in a second, why I'm doing it that way. Um, and there's even different ways you could organize the HTML to do what I'm doing, but I just, I think this is maybe the easiest way to set this up. Um, so there we go. We have some space on the top. Maybe we can make that a bit bigger. We can come in with a 10. Um, and we can always play with this a little bit. One other thing is I think it is a little bit big right now. So what I'm actually going to do um, in terms of width, and the reason this is happening is a little bit with my body and the way I've set this up because I have a place item center and I'm doing this for like styling purposes just to keep it in the middle for the demo, um, which is why I have a, a bit of this stuff on here. But it's basically, it's, it's length right now is being dictated by this line of text because of that. Uh, but I think what we'll do is throw a max width on here. Um, so the max width, I'm going to do 35 CH. And CH is fun because it will adjust to the font size that we're using. And this is probably going to be one of those videos where you're going to see a lot of cards popping up. So if you want to learn more about CH, um, but basically it's 35 characters wide is how you can think of that. Um, so there we go. We start having my card come together. And now actually I just thought of something. Um, what I, we need that background to be on there, right? Let's pull our image back up here and you know, we, we're going to see that it'd be not, I want to have a, a bit of a, a background that's going to come in on this area and you can see that I have like some spacing around and there's multiple different ways we could do this, but I want to sort of avoid having to use absolute positioning and everything. So I think what we should do here actually is have a card, um, content right there. And then we can close that. So we're just grouping all of this stuff together. So we're saying we have a card, then we have this group of content inside of it. It would allow you to do other things in here. Uh, but the main reason I wanna do that is just so I can supply a background to that. And the nice thing with this is if we did have different images or different things that were coming in, it would we'd be able to have different images come in here and it wouldn't matter what the image was, it's still gonna make sure that the text is super readable. So let's come back to here and then we could say that my card uh, content on this, what I'm going to do is let's just, uh, we'll start with some padding. So padding, say 1.5 M and we get that spacing that's going to come all the way around. That's what we're going to use. So again, you could have done something with the padding here, but the reason I didn't want to do that is I want to put the background on this and I'm going to start with a black background like that. And I want this black background to touch the sides. That's the main reason I'm doing it. Now, what you could do with something like this is you could come in with an RGBA, um, right? So you're used to like RGBA and then we do zero, 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 and then like a 0.2, um, but you get that line that's gonna show up up here. So I think the nicest way to do this is with a gradient. I'm not gonna use my custom properties for this. We're gonna stick with black. Um, but for me, the easiest thing to do is just to come in, same idea, uh, but we'll do an HSL first, uh, HSL, HSL. And there's different ways you can write HSL. So you can write it this way with the comma separating and you can do this with RGB as well. Um, I want to have, the color doesn't matter because I'm going with black. So I'm just gonna do a zero. Uh, so we're gonna have a zero percent on that one. Whoops, percent is this one right there. And then we're also gonna do a zero percent right here. And then we're gonna do an over one. And just let's just hit save on that and we should see it comes in as pure black. So zero degrees and zero saturation, saturation, lightness, they don't matter. Uh, sorry, the hue and the saturation don't matter because the lightness is zero. If I did this at 50, it would be pure gray. And if I go up to 100, then we would have a pure white. So one, one of the reasons that um, HSL is very easy to play with. And this is my opacity. So if I did a 0.5 right there, you can see it's 0.5. And again, you can rate RGB the same way as this. Uh, and it's going to work perfectly, just no percentages. Um, I don't know what the browser support is on these though, so do be a little bit careful with it. 
Um, but we can say that this is going to be a linear gradient instead of doing it like this. So let's copy that and say linear gradient. And on my linear gradient, I'm just going to pump it on two lines here because why not? It makes it a little bit easier to see our steps. And so we're going to have that step, comma, that step. And the only thing I'm going to change is we're going to go from 100 or 1 to a 0. And let's hit save. And I did it upside down. Oh, and of course, prettier's <laughs> kicking in here and putting them all onto one line. But that's OK. Um, so let's just look at it again. So I want this to actually be a 0 and this one to be 100% or one, I'm saying 100%, so I keep writing 100, but we can do that. And then we get it fading from black all the way down. Um, the only issue that's happening with this is that because it's going from zero to one, it's like a smooth gradient the whole way. And it's possible that you had like a white thing at the top. So you could add a step in here. So we could actually say it's zero. Then we could come in here with another. Um, so we could say like copy paste that in. So we could have like a 0 0.2 here, but that could be right away at like 10% of the way. Um, there we go. It's formatting it nicely now. So this number here, let's just make this one a, a 255 and like a 50 on here. Um, so we can actually see the color come in. Uh, let's just bring it up to one actually so we can see it. So there we go. So what it's doing is, so it's just saying like go from the, the black, like this black transparent, then by 10% by of the way in, we want it to be pure purple and then fade from pure purple to pure black. So you can choose where you want that to be. So you can see the more I move this, this is the step on my gradient, the more I'm moving it around. So I want it to be like right about there, but I want to keep it as black. So we can keep this at a zero, keep this one at a zero, keep this one at a zero. And maybe this could be like a 0.2 or 0.3, just to ensure that it's dark enough at the top. So we still get it fading out, but we're just sort of making sure that it's faded in enough to make everything uh, nice and easily, uh, nice and easy to read. All right, so now we need uh, the line that's going to come underneath our title and we also want to style our button right here. So a few more things that uh, I think I know how to do. So <laughs> let's come in and that was our card title. So we'll start there, card title. And we're going to do a after. I don't need to style the title itself. I want to style the after. And what we're going to do on here, if ever you have a pseudo element, you always have to give it the content property. So we actually, so you know, it shows up in the DOM. Without that, it never will. If you don't know about pseudo elements, they are the best, and I have a whole series that dives into them. As usual, check, click the click the card there if you want to dive really deep dive into pseudo elements. Um, so yeah, we have my content. So for this one, I'm just going to give it for now. I'm trying to think because of the way this card is. Let's go take a look at it again. Because of the way it's coming off here, I want to use a position absolute because I need to break it outside of the padding that we're inside of. Uh, you could use a translator transform as well, I guess, to pull it out, but I think an absolute position would be the easiest way to do it. So what we can do is on here, come in with a position of absolute. We'll give it a height of, I don't know, three pixels and hit save. Uh, we need a background on there. So background will be my color. It was the accent. Um, and we also, because it's position absolute, who knows where it is right now. Let's give this a width of like a hundred, a hundred percent. There it is. And so it's kind of going crazy right now. Um, most of the time when you're doing something like this, the, you want, it makes it easy when you use position absolute with the, the thing itself. So like the card title here because it's gonna link it to the card title's position. So to do that, you need to make the card the containing block. So that means card uh, card title would become a position of relative, relative, which makes it the containing block. And the advantage with that is, you can see the width is actually matching the width of my title now. And then what we can do is say that the left height is okay. So we're gonna say left is zero. So to move to the left, it's matching the left there. And we're also going to say that the top is zero. Uh, I guess actually we want the bottom to be zero, not the top bottom of zero. So it's lined up on the bottom like that. Uh, let's make this maybe four pixels. Okay. Um, and now I, I do want to move it over that amount. And actually there's two things I want to do. I sort of want it to always match the width of the content. So here on the title itself, um, let's give this a border border or an outline, outline just so it doesn't shift anything. Outline of one pixel solid red. And even though the title is shorter than this line of text, it it's a block level element, so it's taking up the full width of the area that it's inside of. Um, so even if it was just the word something, this box would be that full size. So what I'm actually gonna say is that the width here is max content. 
Um, this would break things. <laughs> so it's a little bit dangerous um, in a sense. Um, so the width max content means that if it's, as long as it's one line of text, uh, if it's multiple lines, it will sort of break a little bit. It won't work the way it's working right now. But as long as it's one line of text, the width will match the width, like how big the text is. So here, if I come in, I take off the word awesome. You can see that the width is matching just the word awesome. So it's a little bit like making it an inline element, but it's still a block element. Like an inline element, the width is always the width of itself um, by default. So it's sort of like being able to control it that way in, in a way. <laughs> it's a way to think about it. Um, so we have the max content. So now my line is the right length because it's matching the width of this, except I need to pull it back a little bit. So this could be somewhere where you could use a custom property that's locally scoped um, just to make your life easier. So here we could say that the, we could come in with padding of 1.5 M. And then what we do here is we say that this is var padding and it looks exactly the same. And this is locally scoped, meaning like I can't use this padding outside of card content. This, this variable only exists within the card content. Uh, but inside my card content, I do have my card title and my pseudo element here. So what I could say here is my left is actually var, or uh, we're going to have to play with this a little bit, but var uh, padding, it's going to move the wrong way. So it moves that way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is a calc and calc times negative one. So it actually moves the other way, except it's not moving. I know why. I know why. This shouldn't have been M, this should have been Rem, so it's consistent. There we go. Um, because this font size is bigger than the card content, the padding here would be relative to the card content if it's M. Um, and over here, it was relative to the font size of the title, which was bigger when it was M. So by doing Rem, it's going to my root M, it's always the same. You don't know about M and Rem, you know the drill. All right, so that's good, except we want it to match in length there. So then what we could actually do is plus, Oh no, the left is good, um, but we want to reuse this here. Where's my width? Width, we could then wrap also in a calc. Uh, so we say calc, take all that, do 100% plus my var padding. So it's doing the padding plus the width that we just set on that. And the nice thing with this is if I ever decide to change the padding, it's always going to be fully adjustable. So I only have to update one value and all of those things are adjusting on the fly. So three padding, it's working, two padding, it's working, one padding, it's working. Whatever I'm setting on there, it's going to work each and every time. I think that's pretty cool. Um, so there we go, that is working out perfectly there. And now we just need to style my button. So this one, I didn't call it card button because you know it could be used for different things. Uh, so we'll start with a cursor, cursor, pointer. Um, it's not actually a button, but you know, just in case it ever was on a button element as well, it makes it a bit more reusable by doing it this way. Uh, text decoration is none. Color will be my dark color. My background color will be my light accent color, which was that one. Well, I just realized I didn't use my variable here. In general, if I have variables set up, I do want to use my variables. That's there. Perfect. I'm gonna turn word wrap off. I don't usually have it on with my CSS. Perfect. Uh, display, I want this to actually be inline block. There we go. Um, because then color, background color, we can come down to here and add some padding. We'll go with like 8.5 M, 1.25 M. I do like having padding on buttons in M. It's a little bit big. Uh, that's okay. We can have a bigger button than we'd planned for originally. I know we need some curved corners on all of this. We're gonna get there eventually as well. Um, but that's looking all right. Now we do want ideally a hover and maybe a focus state on that. My focus is, oh, it's, we're in Mozilla, so we can barely see my focus. So um, what we're gonna say is my dot button hover comma dot button focus. And we'll just make the uh, background color will be my lightest color, which is my neutral 100. And with that, we can also change my color to be the dark color because we can't read uh, oh no, we should be fine on that. That's all we need. There we go. And that means if I tab onto it as well, you can see that it is highlighting it like that. Okay, cool. Um, I said we we're going to get to it after, but you know what? Let's, let's add those rounded corners to there now. So that would be my card itself. And it's going to be hard to see here a little bit, but I'm going to do, maybe turn our background color off in a second. 
if we come on here with a border radius, and I'm going to make it bigger than what I want right now, um, just to highlight what's actually going to happen, is a problem here down at the bottom. So let's turn off this background color so we can see it better. Um, and you can see that at the bottom of the card, it's actually squaring off. And that's happening because the card itself has round corners, but this that has that black background on it doesn't have the round corners. So to fix that, we do need to throw an overflow of hidden on here, and that will solve that problem and everything gets rounded off like that. So that's good. Uh, this we're gonna pump down, it's a little bit too big. And there we go, uh, 0.5 would probably be good. Awesome, and then we can put our background color back on. There we go, so we get our nice card like that. Super duper. Uh, our button, I think we also want some rounded corners on there, so we can do a border radius of 0.25, and that should be perfect. There we go. So we have a nice little button there. Let's go look at what our finished one was. We're pretty much there. Awesome. Um, one thing we could do, actually, and this is a little bit in the same... Um, we'll do it because we did it for the uh, the other one. I want to lighten this text up just, just a scooch, just a scooch. Um, so that would be, I want to select only the paragraph really. So card title right here would be good. Uh, card, we called that one card body. So we could do um, a color of RGBA. Um, and I'm going to do our RGB just to show you. You can do this with HSL, but also we can do a 255. 255, 255 over like a 0.8 or a 0.9. Um, and just to show you that the RGB also works here. Uh, and if you want, you can also, oh, the new syntax isn't supported, so it won't show you the, um, what color that actually is. But this is a new syntax for RGB and for hex that you can use. Uh, again, I'm not 100% sure what the browser support is for it yet, but um, you know, just to, and if you are doing this with text, it's one way to lighten it. I'm not saying it's the best way. Uh, but it is one way to lighten your text just to make sure you don't overdo it because it can make things a bit harder to read. So yeah, there there is my card and it's pretty much working. And so now we need some interaction and we need stuff to happen to it, right? Because it's it's getting there. We're, we're, we're finding our way, but it's definitely not finished. So how can we add the hard parts now, which is getting it all to move? So I think we'll start again, start with the things you know, and then go from there. So one of the easiest things to do is when we go on our card, we want to grow and shrink just a little bit. So we're going to start with that. Uh, so let's go onto my card itself. Um, so what we're going to do is come in here and say that on my we want it, this to be on hover, right? So dot card hover. We want the transform of scale, and we're going to do like a one point oh. Whenever you do scale, like you don't want to do the scale much because even like a one point one, it really makes things like explode in size. I find that's a lot anyway. Um, the other thing you might notice along the way when you're doing this is like some things get a little blurry sometimes. It's just, it just happens, um, especially while it's transitioning. So it's getting bigger or smaller. Now we can say a transition of the tra transform. Um, and let's just do like 500 milliseconds ease. Should be fine. There we go. So you can see as the animation's happening, sometimes things get a little blurry. Um, there's not a ton that we can do for that, sadly. Um, and you can also see this little white line that's showing up. We can, might play around with that a little bit to try and get rid of it, but it, I think it's an artifact of the overflow actually. We'll see if we can get rid of that after. Uh, but there we go. So that's working when we hover on top. But what happens if I tab in? Well, if I tab in, nothing, my button highlights, which is good. That'd be good. That'd be really nice if I tabbed in and it also did the same thing. Well, I don't really know how to do that. So maybe we'll come back to that after. I, I do know how to do it, by the way, <laughs> but we'll come back to that after. Let's again, we want to start with the simple thing. So the simple thing, there's that. OK, another thing is I want the title to I want everything to be down and then move up. That's kind of tricky. OK, let's we have the whole thing needs to move up and the things need to blend in. But then I also have this line that needs. Let's start with the line, because I think the line would be the easier one to do there. So here's my card title after. So maybe the easiest thing to do here, so what we want to do is here we can say card hover, and then when we card hover, we want the card title after. It's an interesting selector. Um, and then we want to take that and we want to say that we're going to transform scale. And we're going to uh, scale x. I always mix them up. Y is up and down. So we can do a scale x of 1. We're already there, right? Yes. So what we actually want to do is say that here we have a scale of zero and now it's gone and then it appears. So it's gone and it's back. So once again, 
transition, transform. Uh, we'll go with, what was it? 500 milliseconds ease. And now you can see it grows and shrinks. Aha, but it's, it's growing and shrinking from the wrong place. Hmm. So one thing that's really important with animations or transition, transitions in particular, is whenever you are, I'm first actually the transition, I'm, I'm making sure I'm not doing things like width. It, you get much better performance uh, when you're doing things with transforms or opacity. If you can limit your transitions to transforms or opacity, you're always gonna get higher performing transitions. I'll add a link to the description that talks more about that. Uh, some really good articles that go into how everything is done and why that's the best things that you should be animating. Uh, or transitioning. And another thing is like, just because in this case, as we see, like it's doing it from the wrong place, but you can have control over that. So let's go in. This is where you can actually do a, I'm going to leave it here with my transform. We can do a transform origin. And that says where you're transforming from. And I want to transform from the left. And you can get more specific than that, but look at that. It's coming in from the left and then going away. Cool. So we solved that problem. Now we need the whole thing to move down and then to move up into position when we hover. Okay. So everything here is wrapped inside of my card content. So we can take that whole card content then. So let's go up to card content and let's move it down. So once again, if we can move something with a transform, um, transform, we do like as much as possible. So this is instead of taking a position absolute and moving it down and then moving it back in, changing the top, bottom, left or right, try as much as possible to use your transforms instead. So transform, I'm going to do uh, translate X or Y it's Y this time. And we want to do, this is where it's a little bit of a guessing game, <laughs> um, where we want to move it down. The font sizes, so many different things could play into to action here. And look at that. And now, actually, this is where that overflow hidden is really coming in handy because <laughs> it's sticking out the bottom like that. And it was hiding because we had an overflow hidden, so it would just disappear. So now if I hover on top, it's doing its whole thing, but we also want that to come back up. Okay. Um, and actually, you know what I'm going to do on my body here, just because my face is covering things just a little bit and say padding left of like 10m right of 10m no go up to 15. ha there we go okay so you can see things a little better now um but we can see that that's sticking out the bottom right there so what we want to do and i'm going to leave the overflow hidden off here because it's hard to work when you can't see what you're working with and we can turn it back on after so that's going like that that's great so now well, we already have our, <laughs> we have to come in with another card. We have a whole bunch of stuff happening here on card and hovers. Um, so on card hover, we can bring this down here. And if you're using SAS, like you could also simplify maybe with a bit of nesting and stuff on this. Um, so card hover dot card content. And what do we want to do with that? Well, we want to bring the transform back up to zero, one hundred zero. We, we, we don't want to transform. So now it should click up and down. There we go. So it's working properly. That's perfect. Um, except obviously we don't want it sticking out the bottom and we need to animate it. So let's come in and transform, uh, transition it, not animate. Well, it's an animation transform 500 milliseconds ease. And so we go over, it comes up and we go down and it goes off. So that's starting to look not too bad. I'm sort of happy with how that's working, except it looks a bit, well, it's, it looks a bit weird because we have this big thing sticking out the bottom. So let's fix that. There we go. So that looks a little bit better, I think. Um, we're getting there, we're getting there. I'm actually going to go on my card title for one second here. Bottom, I'm actually gonna make this like negative two pixels. I just wanna move that bar down. It was touching the G a little bit and that was bothering me. There we go, that looks a bit better. Um, so it's all it's it's all working, but I, we want those steps that we saw at the beginning where different things are happening at different times. And so we can easily do that. And there's two different ways um, you can add in transitions. You can add in your transition delay into these. Uh, but I think it's a lot easier to delay things um, at the right times. And actually, there's another thing we want to do is put the opacity on all of this stuff here. We have some and, you know, here it's where it's a little bit awkward whoa what whoa look at that if i hit tab it it highlights that and it moves up but then i so, okay we need to fix that that's for sure um which we will we will <laughs> so yeah tab tabbing seems to be causing a big issue right now until i hover on top to fix it which is kind of awkward 
Um, so we need to fix that and I want to fix these animations and stuff. So what we're going to say is my card content hover. That's all fine. So what we'll do here, actually card content, we have that we're going to say is card. Actually, now let's start this here just to be consistent. So we're going to say card content. And then uh, we could say that I'm going to do this to begin with and say opacity is zero. So it's all going to disappear and we can't see anything. We just have the black box that's moving up and down now, which is kind of useless. Um, but then here, when we hover, we could say that now we'd actually have to come in with this guy again. Um, so dot card uh, hover. Then we want to select the card content, everything inside. And then this will get a opacity of one. And now when we go on top, the opacity comes in and then the opacity goes down. So here we can transition that opacity. Uh, opacity, we'll go with the same thing, 500 milliseconds. I'm gonna do linear uh, on the opacity actually. So now it fades in and it fades out, except it's weird that we have a title with no text on it. So in this case, what we wanna do is instead of selecting everything, we wanna say everything except or not. Think of not as a lot like except. Select everything but not or except for my dot card title. So now my card title is visible, but when I hover on top, then the opacity comes in on everything else. And there's something weird happening with my button there. We're gonna to have to investigate that. That's super strange. <laughs> um, but at least that's working. It's coming in and it's working. Um, but there we go. So my opacity is transitioning as it moves up. And then when we go down, it goes back down. And you know what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take this guy right here and also put it on the opacity of one, just because I don't think we really need it, but it, you know we're doing it on one side, so we might as well have it on both of them at the same time. Um, so we're getting there, but now what I want is I want the bar to be drawn, then I want it to move up, then I want that text to fade in. All right, so we want the bar is coming in at the right time. We have the bar coming out, that's step one. Now we also need to fix the thing with the tab happening where, oh my goodness, it's even more broken now because when I tab on, oh, there's nothing because I'm not hovering, so the opacity is not being fixed. Oh my goodness, okay, so there's that problem that's still happening. There's also an issue where, so that sucks. And also what happens, I mean, that's with the tabbing. What happens if somebody doesn't want animations? We still have to deal with that. Also, what if, I mean, one issue with all of this is mobile devices. If somebody's using a mobile device, they can't even hover on top of it. So we still need to figure that out. But again, let's focus on the things we know how to do. So let's, we've done all this transition work. Let's time these transitions out a little bit first. So the bar is good. Then let's go to my card content itself, which was Actually, let's move this one to here. We're doing card content, then we're doing the card content hover, then we're doing our not thing, and then we're doing the hover for that not thing. Um, just so it's a little bit more organized. Same thing here, we have my card, the card hover, card content, card content hover. We're doing the card not thing, the card content not thing hover, right? So just to keep it a little bit more organized. Um, so what we can do here is on the card content, we have our transition. And again, you could put the delay here. I just find it so much easier to do a transition delay over here on its own. And you can add this here, no problem at all. And so now we go like that, it comes in and then it goes up. And then it goes, I don't really want it to do it that way around. I only want to do it when it goes up. And what's interesting with that is you can actually take it off of here and put it only on the hover then. So we're gonna delay it when we hover, but we're not gonna delay it when we're removing hover. Cause this is, when we have this, it's the, the default, right? So we delay it when we hover, but then we don't have it when we go that way. Ah, that's kind of cool, right? There we go, delay it that way, and then don't delay it that way. And then we might as well come out on this one and do the same thing on this, where we can do a transition delay, and we can do 500 milliseconds on this one as well. So there, and then it fades in. We still have to fix that button and maybe this could actually be a bit longer. Maybe this is even a thousand. So it moves, it goes up and then it all fades in. Look, it also helped fix our button somehow. This I actually think is a Firefox related problem and not something that's in Chrome and I am in Firefox right now where it was the moving and the um, opacity might've been causing a little bit of a glitch on that one, but there we go. So it goes across, goes up, fades in. So nice, so wonderful, that's great. And that's, you know, and then we go off and it all just disappears. So for me, I, I'm super happy with that. I think that works super, super well. 
Now we just need to fix all these problems that we have with it. Because this is usually where the tutorial ends, right? We get to this stage, it looks great, but then how do we deal with mobile devices? What happens if somebody's on mobile, they don't know to touch it? Um, and then does that even activate it? If somebody keyboard navigates, it's completely broken. So how can we fix all of that? Um, so, and we also, you know, we have to take into consideration people that are on, have prefers reduced motion. So how can, how can we handle all of that? Um, I mean, it really breaks when someone's tabbing. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this and let's break it down. Um, we're going to look at, uh, also, I know if you're using SAS, this could be a lot easier because you could have a lot of nested things, but that's okay. What we're going to say is card hover or dot card. Uh, and we're not going to say focus, but we're going to say focus within. So if the card has a hover on it, it's going to grow in scale. Or if something inside the card has a focus, it's going to scale up. Um, but we, we know everything is still kind of broken, so I'm not even going to test that yet. Let's, let's leave that like it is now. Um, or should we? There, you can see. Ah, it did. It got a little bit bigger. And if I shift tab out, it gets smaller. Hit tab, it games in. Shift tab, it goes out. It's just we broke our layout, so we have to let everything come in, fix itself. Okay. So if we keep on going from here, the next thing we want to do is, so that gets bigger. It's not really perfect. That's Actually, this is a really interesting thing that's happening right now. As you can see, when... When I clicked on that, the, the text actually came up. So here, what I mean by that is like, we have to let this whole thing run right now. Uh, but when I tab on that, it's coming in because the focus, um, the overflow hidden. And when items have an overflow hidden, they and they gain focus, uh, it needs to be within view. Now the opacity is zero, so I can't actually see it, but uh, the browsers will do this on purpose because if something is hidden away, they wanna make sure if it gains focus because someone is using a keyboard, they want to make sure that it's actually visible to the user. So this is something that in this case won't actually cause us any issues once we're finished, but it could be something if you're working on it, just if weird things jump when you tab into something, that could be one of the reasons why it's happening. Uh, but let's jump back into our code here. Um, so we have that, their scale is going up. Now I have to hover on this and let this whole weird thing happen to get rid of it again. Uh, but now we can jump in. So here is where we have the card hover, the card content. This is what's actually making it happen, right? This card content right here on the hover is where it's coming up when we hover on top. So what I want to do on this one now is we can do the same thing. We're going to do a dot card focus within uh, dot card content. Now it's not going to fix it yet. And I'll explain why in a second, but if we tab in, you can see it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> and if I tab out, it fixes it and it goes back to normal, which is good. So you can see now like we can actually escape it without having to run that weird janky animation thing that was happening. Um, but it's that weird thing where this happens and then it moves up again. And this is that side effect that I was just talking about. It's gonna be less visible in Chrome. Chrome actually handles, this is Firefox. I do most of my CSS dev work in Firefox. Uh, just because the dev tools are a little bit better and Chrome is catching up, but they're a little bit better still for CSS. But what's happening is it's forcing it into view and then because it's been forced into view, then it's running that animation and it does that weird thing. And then it, it well, it goes, well, now that I finished that animation, I know it can actually be there. So then it drops back down. So that's why you're getting, uh, let's let the whole thing run so it can go back away. It doesn't want, oh, we're, we're focused in. That's why. So now that's why when I do that, you can see it does it and then it drops back down and it's kind of weird, right? So this is one um, place where we'll, we will have to do this. We're going to say card focus within uh, dot card content. And we're just going to say that it has a transition duration of zero milliseconds. And this is going to overwrite my um, this one here. So here we're saying it's 500. We're getting more specific. We're lower down in the cascade, all of that good stuff. So now if I tab in, it's instantly going to be in place already. There's that one little glitch, um, but actually it doesn't happen in Chrome. Let me pull Chrome opened here just so you can see. Uh, the same thing here in Chrome. Uh, let's get out. So if I tab in, it goes into place. And if I tab out, it goes out of place. Um, Firefox gets this little glitch there where it, it jumps, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, so we can see it's working. Now we, we have a few other things, but this will just stop that weird, you know, th this prevents some issues from happening. It just means that it won't move up slowly. That's, we're sacrificing something for people keyboard navigating, but it gets around weird glitchy behavior. So I think it's worth it. Uh, another hover effect. So another hover effect means we should probably copy the whole thing, <laughs> paste it underneath. Let's go fix a few things. We want to get rid of that into a comma 
And here we want to switch this into a focus within. Uh, so this one's our opacity. So now if I hit tab, the opacity is working. And then that means I can also shift tab out and it goes back, hit tab, and it all comes in. Um, it could be worth maybe changing the transition delay here. So just because like I tab in, there's nothing, there's nothing, and then it comes in. So if you wanted to, you could do a little bit like what we did here, where you change the transition delay for uh, or transition duration. Um, or actually, in this case, it wouldn't be the duration, it would be the delay. So you could change the transition delay within focus within if you find it's too long. I'm going to leave it like this just to keep the code a little bit simpler. Um, but uh, and we still haven't done the underline. So once the underline comes in there, it's not going to seem so bad, I think. But if you wanted to, you could um, only for this line to break that off onto its own and change the transition delay there. Uh, and finally, here we have this with the hover. So we can duplicate that line of text, change that into a comma, and card hover becomes focus within. And now let's hit save, tab, that goes over, that comes in, shift tab out, that's working. And if I go on like that, it's also working here. So in both situations, it's working pretty good. Obviously a little bit different for if you're keyboard navigating, but I think that's perfectly fine. And we're getting there, so that's great. But we have two more problems. <laughs> uh, the first problem is what if somebody is on a mobile device? So uh, this is something to be careful. If you are in Firefox and you go into the mobile mode, there is somewhere in the settings for Firefox that you can get it to behave like Chrome when you're in it. Oh, it's this guy right here. There you go. That little hand enable touch simulation. This is like what it is in Chrome by default. Um, and because I'm in there, you can see now that I'm hovering on top, it's not actually doing anything. So, you know, I'm, I'm hovering, nothing's happening. I turn that back on. It's like I'm on a, so this shows you if I'm on a touch device, well, nothing's actually happening. And if I click, nothing's happening. And well, that's kind of awkward, <laughs> right? This is really, really bad. So what we're actually going to do um, is we're going to change some of the stuff we have here. And I know this seems a little bit weird. And I guess if we planned all this from the beginning, this could be something that could have been overcome from the very start. So this is really where I think it's we we're taking the happy path. We've gotten things working. We're taking all the steps. We're working on one thing at a time and not trying to do everything at once because that's always a bit of a nightmare. Now, once you know how to do all of this, you can sort of put them all together and do it more of a more of an organized way from the very beginning but I sort of wanted to break this down and focus on one thing at a time, uh, just so we can really focus on one thing at a time, because I think that makes a little bit more sense. So what we're going to do is, um, basically, <laughs> we're going to have to change anywhere, and we can leave the transitions, that's not really the big deal. Um, what we don't want necessarily is the scale, which we don't have to worry about, but we don't want uh, some of these things where things are hidden away. So this I don't really want, so I'm actually gonna take both of these here, and we're gonna cut that. I'm going to do it like this at the beginning, and if you wanna change it all afterward, by all means you can. Uh, what we're gonna do is an app media, and here we're gonna write hover. Do you know you can do that? You can, cool, right? Um, so we're saying hover, and you might also see this written as hover, hover. And there's not just hover that you can use here, there's other properties that you can use as well. Now this is hover, there are other ones you can use here as well. When you're using hover like this, it really means that you're doing it as the primary pointing device. So if the, you know, some, you could be on a, a laptop, say that has a touch screen, but the primary pointing device will still be the mouse. So it is, it, it can't make that distinction. It doesn't know if somebody's doing one or the other, but it's focused on the primary pointing device. So if the primary pointing device can hover, what do we want to do? Well, now our card content will get this. And do you notice now it's not down? But watch this, I'm going to turn, I'm going to click this little guy here and let's hit refresh. Look, it's down there now. It's down there, we have hover. Let's turn, turn that back on, let's hit refresh. And now it's up there. Because when a device has hover, it's going to move it down. If a device does not have hover, then it's gonna keep it up here. Ooh, that's kind of cool. Um, and actually I said I was gonna leave this here, but I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a control X to cut that. <laughs> and then let's find anywhere that we don't wanna have um, certain things on. So actually, I mean all, actually let's undo that. <laughs> all of this. And all of this, and all of this, and wait, wait, let's keep going. We're going through a lot of things here. Okay, so all of these things can come and actually go inside of this media query right here. So let's drop that in right there and hit save. Look, we can see everything. The only thing missing now is our after, and that would be coming from 
only pretty much this guy right here, right? So that's my card title after. So I'm just gonna cut that, hit save, and it come back in. And then we can come up here and do my dot card title after and put that in. So now what's happening, let's just take this whole media query and we're just gonna bring it all the way down to the bottom. Uh, let's, let's, I'm gonna leave my buttons after, but we're gonna throw this down here. So if I'm on a touch device, like we are right now, we're on a touch device, on this touch device right here, if I'm on this, I can see everything. Nothing's hidden, it's always there, I can go, I can see all the content. But then if I come in and let's just open it up a new tab and we'll look at both of them at the same time maybe. Uh, let's come in here to a new tab. Look at this, so this is the same page, touch device versus not touch device. So the not touch device, we get our fancy little animations all running. And I mucked up one thing clearly because that's going all the way across. Uh, but here we have no animations, nothing weird, no hidden content that nobody can find. And then over here, everything is almost working. Let's go see what I did wrong there. Uh, card title after, that's good. Oh, I put cart, card, there we go. <laughs> so let's just turn that off, hit refresh, and there we go. So we have all of our cool little animations and everything working, but then if I'm on a touch device, everything is just there, nothing's hidden away, and we don't have to worry about people not being able to get it. So what does this mean? It means somebody on a mobile device gets a great experience where they can see all the content, and somebody who comes up on a desktop device or something else that has a pointer, has a mouse, then they get this cool little hover effect or, you know, they get a little bit more of an enjoyable experience, a little micro interaction that goes on and just helps bring everything together a little bit. But we still have one problem that is left and that is what happens if somebody doesn't want any animations going on. Um, and this is quite common where people don't want to have an animation. It's they, there's lots of different reasons why they might. It could just be they prefer that way. It could be that animations actually, it's something that bothers them. Uh, there's a lot of people parallax scrolling is just like they're out of there. If they have parallax, they're gone. So we, we want to, if somebody's taking the time to disable um, different, if somebody is taking the time in their system settings to say that they don't like things moving around, they don't like motion, that means we should honor that. So when you want to do a prefers uh, reduced motion, it's at media. So once again, another media query and prefers reduced motion. And if you do this, it's actually saying like, if they don't like motion, you can do that. Um, and there's also the choice of doing no preference. And if we were going to refactor this completely, I'd probably put all the animations in here. Uh, but one thing we can do, and this is from Andy Bell's modern CSS reset. So if somebody has taken the time to disable the um, reduce, prefers reduced motion, they've disabled animations within their operating system, we wanna go on to reduce. Uh, so they've, they've chosen reduce, again, it's reduce or no preference. So they've chosen reduce. It's just saying choose everything, uh, make the animation duration super short, the iteration count super short, the duration really short, and, and all of these things. Important is on all of them, so we don't have to worry about specificity, it just works. And if you want to test to make sure this is actually working, if I come and I go into, this is in Windows settings, you just look up animation, it's gonna highlight this for you in your settings. Uh, there's also places in the Mac, obviously. So if I turn off my animations in Windows and I refresh my window here, now, see how everything just sort of happens? Everything is just sort of jumping up into place, except for that underline. Notice how that underline is just going across there. Um, so I'm actually gonna modify this a little bit by doing star, and we can also do star, before and my star after, just like that. And now, there we go, everything sort of comes into place. Um, we could also, just to fix it for this situation, um, and this is up to you on how you wanna do it, but you could also come in here and do transition delay of zero and also put the important on there. Um, just cause obviously it's a little weird that like each step is still happening one after the other. So now everything uh, and of course, if you, these, you do need to put milliseconds and stuff on them. <laughs> there we go. So you can just have it like come up and come down. Um, so we're, you still have the thing that's hidden. It's just at least we're not animating it. It's just appearing or disappearing. And of course, with that, you could also take the extra step at this point along the way of also, instead of doing it the way we just did it now, where everything is just set up the same way it was for our uh, hover, where everything is just there and there's no animation that even happens. It's not popping up anything if you wanted to take that extra step as well. Now, if you enjoyed this and learned something along the way, you might really enjoy this video here where I cloned a card from PopDog that also involved a lot of fun animations and cool little challenges along the way as well. And with that, a really big thank you to my enablers of awesome, Zach and Randy, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.